اوكي هي جايز انا راح اقرا معاكم السلايدات تبعت سيلولر سيكيورتي اند اي سيرشت ان انتروداكشن تو سيلولر سيكيورتي باي جوشوا فرانكلين اند اون جوجل اند اوبتيند فروم ذس لينك ذس برزنتيشن اند وي ار ناو ات بيج 11 اوت اوف 117 And I think this corresponds to uh, this slide, the first one. So, راح أحاول أقرأ من هون لأنه أنا مش فاهم كتير ال السلايدات وهاي أول مرة بقرأها. فال LTE هي it stands for uh, long term evolution. It's a fourth generation cellular technology standard. from the third generation par partnership project uh -huh, and it's a four generation uh, network and it's voice technology all implementations must beat baseline requirements increased speed multiple antennas MIMO I think had the IP based network, new air interface. So we have OFDMA. Uh, OFDMA is used, which is the frequency division, uh, multiple access, and duplexing, timing, carrier spacing, coding. So I don't know what these are exactly, but. Um, We'll see later on. Is uh, I'm I'm reading slides uh, week five, and uh, I'm skipping week one, two, three, and four. So, um, okay. So we have long-term evolution, also known as evolved packet system, and the air interface used is OFDMA, which is orthogonal frequency division. multiple access and the three main components are the evolved U-TRAN or EU-TRAN which is the radio network and the component is the evolved packet core which is the backhaul and the IP multimedia subsystem which is the IMS and the extended backhaul functionality So, خلنا نشوف إذا موجود هنا عنا ال components. So, my mo لا هاي M V N O. So, هاي this slide is just ex explaining the. يعني what each frequency is is used for يعني. Okay, so ما لقينا ال components. خلنا let's try to search. So the components are. Okay, these are kind of different. All right. So, we have the evolved U-TRAN radio network, backhaul, and extended backhaul functionality. Then, a reminder that the LTE is a completely packet-switched technology for both data and voice. Has Anna? I don't exactly understand this, but I do understand that, يعني the packets are switched between sending data and voice. So it supports voice. Uh, over VoIP, I think he's a voice, and it supports data, يعني جي data packets. بكون في مرات data packets وبيكون في مرات voice, but they're they're two different. Um, I think Hadi. Uh, oh, okay. So this is the Utran. This is the. Evolved. Okay. Hadi il EU tran. Ah, okay. So this is just the device. Hi here il 
in architecture it, it in, 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 involves the e utron اللي هو ال evolved utron اللي هو radio network so this is the radio network and this is the EPC which is the backhaul and it stands for uh, evolved packet core all right oh, um, طيب. هسا, I think this is the main memory unit and I'm not sure what this means I think it means the main memory unit this one I don't know what it means the IMS Hadi Maktube for it's the IP multimedia system which is the extended backhaul functionality so I'm guessing this is what contains the functions of the EPC and uh, generally we have a main memory unit yeah I'm not sure if this MME what it stands for Oh, the big picture in a mobile device connected to a base station, which is number two, uh, and we name it as the network, uh, which connects to a backhaul network, the backhaul network, which connects to the internet. So the internet contains a functionality. Okay. So high mobile devices. We can a universal SIM card. Uh, UE we are connected with the parts of the UE. UE is the user equipment. So high is the user equipment. So let's add text. User equipment. Oh, hadi maktub before. Hi maktub before. Hi maktub before. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, I I really wonder what SGW means. Ah, gateway. Uh, GW means gateway, I think. Or oh, S, I don't know. S and P, I don't know. Maybe there's a word here. Nope, I don't know. Okay, so the user equipment. Oh, okay, it's written here. User equipment to an evolved packet core is the is this one, and it's the core network of the LTE system. The evolved node B. So I guess E and B means evolved node B. E node B or E and B, an evolved network, an evolved node B, and the E utron, which is the evolved universal terrestrial radio access network, is the radio network that exists between UEs and E and Bs. So the E utron is the network that exists between the E and B and the UE. Ah, okay, so MME means Mobility Management Entity. So I'm sorry if I... Uh, so Hadi, uh, Mobility Management Entity. Mobility management entity وهذا البوكس box تبع ال MME uh, it's a primary signaling node so it doesn't have user traffic and it has large variation in functionality including managing, storing, UE contexts, creating temporary IDs sending pages, controlling authentication functions, selecting the S gateway and P gateways. Uh, the serving gateway 
carries user plane data and anchors uh, the mobile devices, the user and user equipment for intra evolved node B handoffs and routes information between the uh, what's the P packet gateway and the evolved UTRAN and the UTRAN means Universal Terrestrial Radio Access Network بعدين عنا ال PGW اللي هو ال Packet Data Network Gateway uh, allocates IP addresses, routes packets and interconnects with non-3GPP networks so ال S تعمل carrying the user plane data anchors uh, uh, user equipment for intra NB, ENB handoffs and the routes information between the PGW and the EU tram. P PGW allocates the IP addresses, routes, packets, and interconnects with non-3GPP networks. Um. Okay. Hala anna il home. Subscriber service, a home subscriber service, which is the HSS, is the master database with the subscriber data. Uh, so you need to subscribe to the LTE. So this is the subscriber and it's called home subscriber service. Authentication center resides within the HSS maps an IMSI to K performs cryptographic calculations during AKA so what's IMSI and AKA hand of and paging connection management subscriber entity So AKA is a challenge and response authentication protocol. Uh, authentication is not mutual. So it's like a, a, a challenge and response we'll explain later. And uh, IMSI, I think in can the memory unit, uh, sorry, the MMI, I'm not So, هنا عنا the mobile country code, هنا the subscriber ID, وهذا the mobile network code, the IMSI هو هذا, all of it. So it's the international mobile subscriber identity. It's a 15-digit number stored in the SIM card. And that's what I was trying to say, the SIM. So, yeah. Uh, and the AKA calculations during the uh, challenge response uh, uh, the challenge and response uh, authentication protocol آخر شيء IP multimedia subsystem IMS هي paging and connections to the PSTN. So I think the doctor مختصر كل كل ال components اللي مشروحة in detail. But I'm not sure because I didn't read the rest of the slides. 
security mechanisms continue to use the USIM hardware module. So what is the USIM? The GIS GSM SIM now labeled the USIM. It runs atop the UICC. Wow, yani abbreviation brings an abbreviation. So the these are the carrier, I guess. So SIMs are deprecated. The modern term is USIM. The USIM, the USIM, SIM card, runs atop the UICC, which is the physical card. So the... Ah, oh, it's the universal SIM card. Okay, now it makes sense. Okay, let's see the UICC. The GCM SIM is now labeled the Universal SIM. And the Universal SIM applications run atop the UICC. So what is the UICC? Contains the CPU, the, uh, the ROM, the RAM, and input output and metal contacts all right this is crazy continue to use the universal sim card hardware module and the subscriber and network authentication is via challenge and response protocol. Will cryptography and algorithms key hierarchy? Will protected interfaces, will protected planes. So the LTE hardware token is the LTE universal SIM. Uh, oh, this this stands for universal integrated circuit card. Is identified is identical to the universal. MTS UMTS Hanshu what is UMTS Oh my god It contains a unique ID for a terminal which is uh, like the user uh, They, con they contain a unique ID for a cellular subscriber. They used HSP8 technologies, which I have no idea what that is. I guess it might be a type of Um, it's like a issue that comes with cryptography, I guess. Um, it contains a new hardware protected 128-bit key, K, as in GCM. So I think this is uh, some algorithm, some cryptographic algorithm. It never moves from UICC and HLR authentication 
é, center. What's the HLR? Mushmana. And keys are derived from K as needed. So we have one K and we derive other keys from this big K. The authentication center stores an, an INSI, which is an international mobile subscriber identity and K. So um, the LTE hardware token, uh, Hakana in no, it contains a protected key, and as an in GSM, it doesn't move from UICC and HLR and authentication center or the authentication center. All it in the um, what this means. Uh, okay, I think خلصنا هاي. For authentication center stores an INSI, which is an international mobile subscriber identity, and a key. So, the authentication center and the key will uh, INSI. طيب هلا authentication as the the uh, the challenge and response عنا, uh, it's, it's similar to the GSM and, it, and UMTS aka so what is UMTS I have no idea oh I was searching this so I guess the UMTS is another um, standard uh, اه اوكي يعني احنا عندنا ال LTE وعندنا ال UMTS وعندنا ال GSM يعني هدول different types so I'm not sure is a slides number 1, 2, 3 or 4 talk about this or not so we'll see later uh, it's anchored in hardware token في ال universal sim ال um, authentication challenge response ال challenge response Um, a challenge response authentication it's embedded inside of it and we will discuss the LTE challenge uh, response in detail overall ladder diagram um, a ladder diagram is just a type of coding and uh, I think and it's, uh, it's like pictures coding in pictures I think Generation of AKA security parameters, and we will also discuss the verification within the universal SIM card. First of all, the ladder diagram. So, the vertical lines are the mobile. The user and, and uh, 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 the user Elihu and is connecting to the Ishul Nahai MME. It is the mobility management entity. Okay. And it uses the IMSI, which is the International Mobile Subscriber Entity. Then we use the same IMSI, but we have, I think, high SN, يعني serial number ID, which connects to the. I think I HSS to that subscriber network subscriber to network home subscriber service server also so we can say it's like our host and I I think Hadora there are just functions. 
Ah, okay. Hadola, they are authentication vectors. So first of all, the user uh, entity or the user whatever uh, sends to uh, the the management mobility management entity, which sends to the home subscriber service. Then it authenticates uh, using the IMS I and K, and then it gives back the these variables. I think yani vectors. Um, then the vectors rand and uh, a u t n go back to the user uh, user ish user equipment بعدين user sends the SRES I guess it's also a verification vector so the AUTN verification SRES generation so they generate the SRES and send it to the management uh, mobility management entity and the mobility management entity checks does the s r e s equal to the x r e s so i think high heel idea of the challenge response in uh, it's the the user sends the let's say the imsi and uh, then the the management uh, entity mobility management entity has this imsi and then uh, it sends it to the home home subscriber service or the authentication center the authentication center um so il, il, the job of the mobility management entity in uh, it, it identifies the serial number serial number he sends it to the home's uh, subscriber service but then had an authentication center uh, generates the XRES uh, based on the IMSI serial number ID and I think this is a just a random number and it's just used uh, to create some randomization and uh, it, I think this is the key because the authentication center has the key and so it, uh, it generates so then it sends the random number and the AUTN and I guess the AUTN can be used to generate the SRES which should equal to XRES because يعني, I guess this one generates this يعني, they all depend on each other something like that so if they're equal then they succeed with the challenge and the response uh, uh, hi GUTI globally unique temporary identity I remember the doctor explained this and uh, the main thing I remember is it's the same as the universal SIM card, but the difference is that instead of sending the uh, SIM card or the actual number, the actual identity, it sends an, a temporary identity uh, and it provides safety. All right, so they say here it's adapted from the 3GPP which is the, uh, the fourth generation LTI. Okay, AVS generation. Okay, because I don't really understand uh, anything, so I'm just going to pause and uh, go back to it. Hi, this slide is just giving me the vectors. Uh, يعني authentication vectors هم AVs uh, 
are necessary to perform the challenge response. فهم مطلوبين by the mobility management entity and generated by the authentication center. The LTE authentication vectors هم واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة أربعة. فإيش عنا ال expected response هو هاد وعنا ال AUTN اللي هو sequence XOR sequence number XOR with the anonymity key بعدين عنا ال random I think هاي بس random number and the key ASME معناها اوكي مش محطوطة so الكي with the ASME خلنا نشوف what if هون موجودة The key K is the local master. The serving network ID. Ah, okay. Hi, hi. Serving network ID. I forgot the serial number. So, hi. Serving network ID is used to derive this key in addition to C K and I K, cipher key and integrity key. So we notice. That the cipher uses a different key than the integrity key. Okay. The AUTN, ulna SQN, برضو هاي. I don't know what it means, but I'm guessing sequence number. So let's just check the sequence number. Exhort with the anonymity key. So حتى the anonymity key, it's different. So we have three keys so far. The four with the master key, which is K, and the AMF is authentication management field. The MAC is the message code authentication message authentication code, and the KDF is the key derivation function. Hadi, it's just like a hash. It's like a hash function. Okay, so we have the diagram. أول إشي عنا the generated sequence number and it generates a random number. They are generated in a non-standardized manner. So the sequence number goes into function one. Which is the which gives us the MAC. So the sequence number, ma random number. So the random we notice it's an input to all functions. Yes, to all functions. So it's fixed for all the functions. The AMF, which is the field issue field authentication management field. مع ال key oh the key is also an input to all the functions تمام so the difference here is the sequence and the AMF they generate the MAC the authentication management field and the sequence number generate the MAC and the key and the random number generate the expected response and they also use function 3 to generate the cipher key and they generate the integrity key and they generate the authentication the anonymity key anonymity key tamam so and the function 1 basically فيها input extra اللي هي sequence will 
uh, authentication management field all the others they just use the random and the key random number and the key to generate uh, expected response cipher key integrity key and the anonymity key so here we have three keys we use this uh, fourth this is the fourth so we use the cipher key and the integrity key to actually generate a K which is ASME I let's say this is the master key okay uh, I don't know what ASME is, is but also we have to use the sequence XOR the anonymity key so one two three keys and the fourth key is XORed with the sequence all generate a, a master key let's say this is a master casmi okay master key and they also use the server network id server network id so right? the server network id that's what i remember universal sim verification so to verify the uh, uh, vectors are they authentication vectors in the usm the authentication process is reversed uh, I'm not sure if this is a mistake or a different so do they mean USM the universal sim I think so if X Mac not equal to Mac uh, X is the expected Mac not equal to Mac then an authentication failure occurs there is a distinct process for this okay if expected Mac does not equal to the Mac then an authentication failure occurs. Universal SIM verification diagram. So we have functions 1 to 4 inside of the SIM, universal SIM. We have a random number which is input to all of the functions. And the key which is also input to all of the functions. And function one is different because it takes in the sequence number and the authentication management field as input to generate the expected Mac. And then checks does the output of function one equal to the Mac inside the authenticate the 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 AUTM if so then it's okay ah uh, but uh, we have to take note that it, this the input is not the sequence number the input is the XOR of the sequence XOR K AK anonymity key oh, okay so Hadi the the this vector is the out the the answer to the sequence XOR the AK so we only want the sequence so what do we do we XOR again with the anonymity key then we obtain the sequence number so this is the XOR operation yani if we XOR it again with the same high it cancels
cryptography in the lar حتى I forgot this is the long whatever this is the long term evolution large change to cryptographic key structure introduced a new set of intermediate keys unique keys for each connection bearer large complicated hierarchy and similar to umts we have two sets of algorithms for confidentiality and integrity uh, I, I guess this one is for confidentiality, AES. This is the algorithm, the block uh, cipher. Okay. So these are just types of... For the key hierarchy, we have the... Let's say this is the highest key. It's only known to the authentication center. And it's stored inside the universal SIM card. And it, this, the cipher key and the integrity key are stored inside the mobile phone. And it's also stored in the home subscriber service and the mobile also has the these two keys so this is the encryption and this is short for integrity but NAS I don't know what it means so the let's say master key I, I mean, this name maybe not um, good, yani, not a good choice, but anyways, it's stored inside the mm, uh, mobility management entity. So, inside the ENB and the mobile, so this is the network and the mobile, we have the key for the evolved node B and we have all so many keys yani this for integrity encryption this is also encryption integrity so PRC I think and NAS I think maybe they refer to some algorithm something like that Key discussion, so K is the master key, wow, okay, so we have a master key and a local master, all right, so this is a local master key, let's write down local, It's the permanent pre-shared key stored in the hardware, which is the big master key. It's located in the universal SIM and the authentication center or the home subscriber service. We have the cipher and the integrity keys. The key ASME is the local master. It's serving network ID serving network id server ser serving network id is used to derive this key in addition to cipher key and integrity key So we have the cipher key, integrity key, and the server network ID, and the sequence number XORed with anonymity key, create the local master key.
the k of the evolution node b is used to derive additional keys used in handoff the k nas and will ink sent and k nas sent protection of nas traffic وهدول is protection for RRC traffic. Now we have the Bluetooth. So the Bluetooth is uh, ad hoc networks of multiple types of devices, such as PDAs, laptops, mobile phones, uh, piconets, small clusters, of size 8 of devices forming an ad hoc network. Uh, masters determine the frequency. Scatter nets are larger networks formed up of up to 10 piconets. It's a short-range communication and a master-slave principle. Eavesdropping is difficult uh, because the frequency is hopping over 79 channels. So it changes 1,600 times per second in a PR manner. Communication is over a few meters only, but the issues is the authentication of devices to each other and confidential channel, and it's based on secret link key. Uh, device security levels. Trust level of the device determines which services that the device has to access. So a trusted device is the device has been previously authenticated, a link key is stored and the device is marked as trusted in the device database. Untrusted device is uh, one that has not been authenticated but a link key is stored but the device is not linked as trusted and unknown device is no security information is available for this device so it's untrusted oops Mode 1, okay, so we have different security levels. Level or mode 1 is that um, the security is only, is you know, there's no security measures applied. It only uh, relies on the frequency hopping. Uh, and the Bluetooth device transmit over the unlicensed band 2.45 gigahertz radio band the same band used by microwave ovens and cordless phones all bluetooth devices employ data hopping which entails skipping around radio band up to 1600 times most connections are less than 10 meters so there is a limit to eavesdropping possibilities mode 2 is service level security and uh, service access depends on the device so that trusted devices have unrestricted access and uh, untrusted devices have no permanent relationship and services that is has access to uh, that, so it has limited access but all services on a device are given the same security policy other than application layer add-ons. Uh, services can have one of three security levels. We have uh, level three, 
which requires authentication, authorization, uh, pin number must be entered. A level two has only authentication with fixed pin. And level one open to all devices, the default level security for legacy applications, for example. Mode three, we have uh, link level security where there's uh, symmetric keys and a challenge response system. We have a pin. BD adder and the random and a link and encryption key. The pin can be up to 128 bit number and uh, can be fixed, uh, entered in only one device or can be entered in both devices a fixed much lower security bd adder is a bluetooth device address unique 48-bit sequence devices must know the address of devices it wants to communicate with addresses are publicly available via bluetooth inquiries Private authentication keys or link keys are 128-bit random numbers used for authentication purposes and paired devices share a link key. Private encryption key uh, vary in length from 8 to 128 bits regenerated for each transmission from link key. Random, uh, RAND is a, sorry, is a frequently changing 128-bit random number generated by the device in software, a uh, common input for key generation. All Bluetooth devices have this random number generator. Initialization uh, needed before two secure devices can communicate. So a generation of initialization key, we have one uh, authentication, two generation of link key, three link key exchange, and step four generation of encryption key in both devices. The conclusion is the link is either built or aborted. Okay, initialization, key creation continued. So the F of pin and size of pin and random and the Bluetooth device address produces 128-bit initialization key via shifting and XORs, linear feedback shift registers. Hadala Bardo, I explained them in my uh, videos about the... Uh, a cryptography so feedback shift registers uh, are mentioned before and the output is combined by a state machine whatever that is device a and b now share the initialization key and they use as their temporary link key while deciding on what kind of link they uh, key link key they will use for data transmission this key is discarded once they agree on a link key okay uh, i'm gonna read the slide again 
So device A and B now share the initialization key, uh, which is the function of pin, size of pin, random, and uh, 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 address. And they use it as their temporary link key while deciding on what kind of link key they will use for data transmission. The key is discarded once they agree on a link key. So this is a temporary key. Uh, <clears throat> Okay. So we have the initialization step. We have two devices want to communicate. So for the first time only, and uh, set up the temporary initialization key. Hadi a pseudo random. What is this? Is this a pseudo random number generator? So let's say this is a pseudo random number generator. It uh, uh, is an input inside an encryption key, and it's also um, taking the pin and the link. What's a length? Let pin and the length of the pin so we have the pin length of pin random and the address so I don't know where's the address generation of link key unit key does not change um, it was made when device was installed. Okay. Application decides which device will provide its unit key as a link key. Favors the device with less memory. And shared initialization key is used to protect the transition. Okay, uh, sorry, the transaction shared initialization key is used uh, to uh, is used to protect the trans transaction. It is XORed with the new link key. Uh, I, I'm not really understanding everything, so maybe I, I will make a, a, a video again. Uh, maybe if I have time. So the link key exchange. Uh, uh, after the unit key is uh, stored in other devices, on other devices, the initialization key is discarded. And higher security is when combination key is used rather than the unit key. And this is formed by the function f of the unit key and the random number and the Bluetooth device address on both A and B. A master-slave communications use uh, a master link key. A slave gets a master link key when first connected to master and then changes it when prompted by master. No. So the generation of the link key we have a pseudo random number generator input to the encryption function with the uh, uh, Bluetooth device address of a uh, device A. So it generates the link key key A for the device A and um, an initialization key is XORed with the random number of A and sent to the pseudo, uh, to the device B and it's used uh, and XORed again with the key initialization and of course we know that if we XOR uh, again يعني هنا, it's already XORed with a key initialization it's going to be XORed again so what will remain is the random uh, number A and this is the output random number A it will be input inside the 
encryption to uh, uh, with the Bluetooth uh, device address A, and uh, then uh, uh, the same will happen for device B. He will also generate a random number B and XOR it with the initialization key, send it to the device B, uh, device A, send it to device A, and then it will be XOR with the K initialization. Then will remain is the random number B, which will be input with the Bluetooth device address B, and then the output, which is the link key KB, will be the same as link key KB here. And the same exact thing will be here. So when these two are exhort, we have the link key. So actually now I understand uh, what I read here, but didn't understand. But now I think I understand much better. So this is they are just exchanging random numbers. And uh, they are not exchanging them uh, in public. Yani they're exchanging the random number exhort with the initialization key which this is a uh, for security purposes yani not much is being exchanged yani usually uh, it's better for security that we do not exchange many things so here from the random number they can um, the authentication part is, which is the second stage uh, it does not always need to be mutual if it is, both devices act as verifiers. Device A is a verifier and device B is a claimant. Basically, it determines if both have same shared key. Authenticated cipher offset, ACO, and the generated at this time as well for encryption. A issues a challenge C to B, generated by its random number. A and B both run the random uh, number through same function, which is the encryption of the challenge C and the Bluetooth device address of B and the current link key, which we already generated. Now we will authenticate. Uh, B sends its response to A, who checks to see that they match. Okay. If it fails, the exponential weighting with a limit set on number of possible attempts. Uh, it starts exponential weighting. On success, the Bluetooth device address of other device is stored in the device database by the service manager so i think this is a visualization of what has been said here so we have a random number generator so we have an au random which is using which is sent by the verifier and the same a authentication random number is sent so actually this is the challenge i guess so uh, the verifier sends the who sends the challenge a issues a challenge c to b and A is the verifier. So how the device A All right. So it it sends the challenge. So the random number is the challenge. And both will input this number to an, an equal encryption uh, algorithm which uses the same link key and the uh, device b address 
uh, this is device B, the address of device B. And um, both generate the ACO, which, as we read, is the authenticated cipher offset. It determines if both have the same ACO. And it outputs the response S. Uh, what's S? Ah, this is the response, and it's sent. So they will check if their responses are equal. As for the encryption, it requires an authenticated link with an established key, link key. So, already, I think we generate a link, we establish a link, and a link key. The devices must agree on an encryption key, and the packet payloads are encrypted. Devices negotiate on what size encryption key they need. Typically around 64 bits or 1 to 16 bytes. We have encryption nodes, modes. Uh, encryption mode depends on the shared key. If unit or combination key, then point to multi-point traffic is not encrypted, individual traffic may or may not be encrypted. If a master key is used, there are three possible modes. Mode 1, that nothing is encrypted. Mode 2, that the broadcast traffic is not encrypted, but the individually addressed traffic is encrypted. Mode 3 is that all traffic is encrypted with the master key. Implementation. Bitcoin, uh, the encryption of payloads, the header. Uh, affected with a stream cipher called E0 that is resynchronized for every payload. And a software implementation is linked from references section. Uh, E0 consists of three parts, the initializer, the keystream bits generator, and the encryption or decryption circuit. Uh, simplified encryption circuitry. Our uh, and the linear feedback shift register, and we have the data word. Data word, يعني it's a 32 bit. I think word means 32 bits or 64. Uh, and it's XOR together, and generated an encrypted word. And the this is the exact same. I don't get it. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. So this is the opposite. This is the encrypted word gives us the decrypted word. Uh, for detail, the key is the encryption of the COF, which is the ciphering offset number, and the random number. Uh, and the link key. The variable size design due to internationalization issues. Uh, the ciphering offset number determined by the type of link key, either a combination or a unit link key, equal to ACU from 
initialization. This was obtained during the initialization key generation process and saved in the security manager. So we, or it could be the master link key, which is concatenation of the master address and the slave address. And this is a visualization. So we have the random uh, generator. So we have the random number and the random number, which is shared. And it is used as an input to the encryption, uh, encryption uh, uh, algorithm. The ACO is the The ACO is the authenticated cipher offset and both have this value and both have the K link. So this generates a key and then the encryption key they have are equal and it's input inside the encryption algorithm. Uh, both have a Bluetooth device address of the master. So this is the master. And uh, there's a clock input. And then the outputs is XORed with the data. Then this is... Okay, so this XORed with the data. And actually what happens is the data is this um, this generates an encryption word encrypted word then they send the encrypted word and uh, the slave can decrypt it by exoring with the data and same thing for here what i don't understand is how do they both have the data and they should specify that this line is the encryption because this is the output of this XOR with the data. So this is line is always encrypted. The weakness is the strength of the pin. And the pin is only a four digit number. So it's very easy to brute force. And many devices use the default pin, which is like 0000. And for memory constrained devices, the link key equals to the long term unit key of the device. So we have the memory constraint. And we have a fixed and unique device addresses. So it's a privacy problem. And we have the weaknesses in the encryption stream cipher. Alhamdulillah, khalasna. Oh my god, um, the video is really long, I, even though I just read the slides. And of course, I didn't explain anything. So I will try to redo this video and make it much shorter but wait this is 40 out of 60